Hey everyone, it's Brandon from Top10Gamer.com and today we're going to take a look at my power supply picks for the month. Uh, this is going to be updated regularly on the website, so if you're seeing this a little bit later, you might want to check out the website to see if there have been any updates. And I'm going to base these rankings on a few different factors that we're going to talk about. But uh, overall, this video might be worth watching if you're building a computer uh, in the near distant future because I want to address some misconceptions that are out there as well as give you some information you need to know before buying. First, let's talk about how a power supply works so that we can get into other topics. I'm not going to go really, really in depth in this video, but it's important for just understanding the basics of power supplies. Uh, your electrical outlet produces AC power while your computer uses a power supply to convert that power into the DC power that's used in most electronics. Having the 80 plus specification simply means that a power supply has qualified for 80% or better efficiency at 10, 20, 50, and 100 percent of its load. Beyond the standard 80 plus certification, power supplies can also qualify for bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium ratings. Here's a graph that explains exactly how that works. When it comes to 80 plus certification, there's a couple misconceptions. First of all, if a power supply doesn't have 80 plus certification, does that mean it's just horrible? No, it does not. In fact, there are several power supplies out there that uh, are not 80 plus certified that actually give you typically about 80 to 85 percent efficiency. One example is uh, on our four to 500 watt picks this month, I chose the Antec VP450 which uh, does, not, is, does not have 80 plus certification, but has typically 80 to 85% efficiency. It doesn't have a PFC circuit, so it cannot be uh, 80 plus certified. So do you want 80 plus certification? Well, you know, that really depends. You know, if you're using your computer a lot, if you leave your computer on, don't put it in standby mode, or if you're just constantly in front of it, playing, gaming, then you might be drawing quite a bit of power and it might be worth going with a higher efficiency power supply. You'll need to look closely at the silver and gold ratings because sometimes those can kind of be interchanged and you won't always necessarily make your money back by buying you know, a gold certified power supply versus a silver po certified power supply. So be sure to check that out and calculate how much power you use to see what the difference might be. Okay, now the next mis misconception is that you have to use a power supply with a Japanese capacitor. Yes, under extreme conditions, you should use a power supply with a Japanese capacitor, but a Chinese capacitor isn't necessarily a horrible option. Back in 2002, this misconception came about when an incorrect formula was used by a Chinese company that had tons and tons of problems with their capacitors. This led to all kinds of misinformation going forward in what you have to use. Yes, does Japan, do Japanese capacitors have better quality control? Yes. Do they use pure aluminum, which is a common theory? And the truth to that is that's kind of changing. Uh, a lot of these Chinese companies have bought formulas and have refined their production and now are producing better and better capacitors, which is why you can actually go with a budget power supply and have a pretty good experience overall. Now, if you're doing some super overclocking and need the purest power possible and can't take any chances, you definitely want to use those Japanese capacitors and uh, get the best quality power supply that you can. But if not, then you might want to consider uh, maybe, a, maybe a power supply that has a Chinese capacitor as well. Okay, so what do I look for when it comes to determining quality for a power supply? The first thing that I look for is actually the warranty. Is it a one, two, three, five, or even a 10 year warranty? You know, if a company is going to put a 10 year warranty on a product, they're not going to back a product that they think is going to fail. Keep in mind that uh, oftentimes even Japanese capacitors are made throughout Asia. Think of the uh, labor costs in a place like Japan. They're going to outsource some of that kind of work to other places around Asia just like we do to we in the United States do to other countries around the world. The next thing I look at are the uh, New Egg Community Forums. They have a list there they've been updating and looking at for the past six years. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go check that out. Uh, that has a list of power supplies ranked by tiers according to uh, part quality, load testing, ripple and noise measure measurements, build quality, and more. So. Uh, Typically, uh, for a gaming PC, I'll pick a power supply uh, from tier one to tier three. And so it's definitely something to look at in terms of power supply because you're getting someone that I would consider an expert in this particular area to rank power supplies. And then what I go on is whatever power supply I think 
gives you the most power and the most value available. Other misconceptions out there are that a single uh, rail power supply is always uh, more powerful than a multi-rail uh, power supply system. I'm going to put a link in the description to below to an Antec article that uh, disproves some of these misconceptions. But uh, overall, uh, I think one of the most important things is just to look at that tiered list from one to three. Obviously, if you're going for overclocking world records, you ought to get something in tier one. But if you're just getting a basic system, something in tier two or tier three that's on rebate for the month might just be the best uh, thing that you can do. Okay, so now the part that you've probably been waiting for. And if you're coming here on a different month, you'll wanna check out the link to my website below so you can go and see what kind of picks I've updated for this series. I'm gonna try to update them monthly. Sometimes it happens every two or three months. Uh, so hopefully you can be patient with me there. But uh, when we're looking at the four to 500 watt power supplies this month, I really like the CX500 because on Newegg.com, you can go and it's $29.99 after a $20 rebate card that you can use on Newegg. So pretty good deal there overall. I also like the VP450, which is typically around 37, 38 bucks. Um, and again, this is another example of a non 80 plus certified power supply that uh, really is a very efficient option. As I said before, 80 to 85% uh, typical efficiency, even though it's not 80 plus certified. So this is one of the better options for budget builds out there. Uh, on the higher end scope of things for this level of power supplies, go with the Seasonic G series. Uh, the 550 watt version is 89.99. Uh, really solid power supply overall that'll last you a long time. In our 600 to 750 watt picks for this month, my favorite this month is the Cooler Master V750, which is a tier one power supply. It's about $104 on Amazon this month. Uses quality Japanese capacitors. Uh, and overall, just a pretty fantastic product. Uh, as you can see here up on the screen, I'm using the tech highlights for it and the other two picks that I have for this month, which include the Seasonic G650, which is just the uh, big brother to the version I mentioned before, as well as the CX750, which is also another big brother option. Both of these are tier two and tier three and are very similar in price to the V750. So again, uh, if it's me, I, I spend just a little bit more here and go with the V750 for this month. For this next group of power supplies, I've got the Seasonic X series, the Cooler Master V series, and the EVGA Supernova G2 series, which are all tier one power supplies. All should last you a super long period of time. But what is my recommendation for this month? The EVGA Supernova gives you a 10 year uh, warranty and it's just a solid 80 plus gold certified power supply that you can get for pretty cheap for around $127.99 this month. In the above 1000 watt category, I've got the three that I'm recommending for this month, but uh, I'm overall gonna recommend the EVGA Supernova 1300 G2. Again, another big brother option here, uh, which uh, on Amazon has a $35 rebate that puts it at $144.99. Should be good for the constant overclocker and heavy power user. Okay, that's my picks for this month. If you're coming late to this video, not the month that it was released in, please go check out the website for my current picks and any up-to-date information. Also, we just hit the 10,000 subscriber mark. I can't believe it. After one year, we're already 10, at 10,000 subscribers. I never thought that this many people would want to listen and hear to what I have to say. So I guess the mark from here uh, above here is the 100,000 subscriber mark. So uh, I want to do something for the channel. I don't know if it should be a giveaway, if I should sing a song. I used to be in an acapella group. And so I kind of can sing, and so I'm willing to embarrass myself in that way. I'm also uh, willing to do other things. So, you know, leave a comment below if, if you've got an idea of what you think I should do. You can also ask me a question there, as well as on facebook.com slash top10gamer. Let's get to that 100,000 mark. Uh, thanks again so much for your support. It really means the world to me and my family. Um, like and subscribe this video if you liked it. If not, then uh, hopefully check me out later. Maybe maybe I can put out another video that you'll think is even better quality or, or whatever. I'm trying to improve each and every single day. So uh, you can help me out again by subscribing and we'll see you next time.